Submitting a pull request is all about gathering feedback and having a conversation about the changes that you're proposing to a code base. But the back and forth for tedious nitpicky changes can take a lot of time. Did you know that in Azure DevOps, you can actually suggest inline a change to the code in a pull request? Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at being able to suggest changes on an Azure DevOps repos pull requests. So tell me more about this. Yeah, this is a feature that I actually didn't know existed. And it's super convenient. Uh, you may have seen this before in uh, on GitHub, for example, where you can suggest a change to a line of code right in the pull request. Uh, so we're going to go and look at which one we were looking at, Simon. Is this completing oh, end-to-end -end demo? Thing. So it doesn't really matter what this pull request is doing for the purpose of this little demo here. But uh, let's say that I'm going through and I generally I'm OK with this pull request, but there's like some little changes here. I don't like that uh, there's all of it, there's some added white space here. And you know I could say like knit white space and then expect the person who created the pull request to go and submit a change for that. But there's this handy little light bulb here where I can insert a suggestion and then I can change what I want it to be. So I actually want to, in this case, remove a bunch of that white space. Um, oh, geez, how much white space do I actually want there? I didn't want to remove it all. I want to remove like half of it, something like that. Uh, and I can add that comment. And now it shows me the change that I suggested. And we have the option here to apply the change. Oh, there's actually a typo in there too. So I can go and edit this. And I don't know where that extra little bit of code came from. Uh, but I believe that's what that line of code was supposed to be. So I can update that. And now we can see it gives me the diff here of what the change was. And I could go and apply the change. As the person suggesting, suggesting the change, I'd say that probably bad etiquette to go and apply the change directly to the pull request yourself. Um, I'd maybe leave that up to whoever owned the pull request to decide how and when they're going to apply all of those suggested changes. Uh, now, that's just with one change. If I click Apply, uh, it gives me an option here to go and commit those changes. Uh, but let me just undo that. So someone else might come in here, Simon, and also suggest a change to the pull request. Hey, sure, I will come in here and pick a line of code and uh, I'll make some changes to it. Oh, look at that. So I can see that you also <laughs> submitted a change, suggested a change here that you're more about disunity than unity. Sure, why not? So we can apply that change and we can go down to the change that I suggested and also apply it. And then we can commit those all as a single commit that, uh, and we can even change what the comment is, but applying suggestions from code review, I get a summary, nice little summary here showing me all of the changes that I'm committing and I can commit that and my pull request is now updated with all of those changes that were suggested by everyone who reviewed the PR. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's really handy because a lot of times we end up with just little things that are nits or slight optimizations or something like that. And being able to go in and just do it makes this a whole lot less painful. Yeah, it doesn't require you to go and you know switch to that branch locally again and go and apply those changes. You can just do it all in line here. After you do the commit, then of course all of your any builds that you have that are triggered as part of that pull request will go and rebuild. So you still have all the pipeline validation that happens, and then you can continue on and complete the PR. Awesome. Oh, I love it. I'm going to start using it as soon as I find a project to use it on. Cool. OK, well, thanks, everybody, for joining us on another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share. And we will see everybody next time. Bye. Bye.